how's it going? Hello? Alright. How's it working? Okay. So how's it going, guys? I know um, I'm not, I'm again alone, but uh, I can't really get a hold of the other dude, so I wanted to put out a video because we've been skipping a mass amount of days, so what I wanted to, like, pretty much, what I think the best idea for a solo video at this point would be, would be kind of a, explain what my fetish is for uh, Piglet. <laughs> Because honestly, if anybody's, if you've watched more than one episode, you've heard me complaining about how underrated Piglet is, and I, uh, I don't really, like, I feel like people misunderstand what I'm saying, like, people ex expect me to put him in the top three. Reality is, I, I do kind of, uh, I kind of, over, like, I may actually overrate him, I'll be honest. I put him in the top five pretty much every single rating I do have for ADCs, and it might be slightly unfair, but he's pretty much the one that got me into League, so it's, I feel like it's kind of justified. <laughs> so, um... What I want to acknowledge first is what I think the biggest portion of what people complain about is for, uh, um, essentially what they, like, I want to, I want to acknowledge what most people, uh, say is the biggest problems with, uh, Piglet. So, um, again, this is what I can see. There's not really anything I can do besides acknowledge the, uh, things I can see on, like, the stats and in the games itself. I don't know what goes behind the scenes, so I have to kind of make it my own stuff beyond that. <laughs> so, uh, what I want to go, let's go to season... I'm going to start when he first came into League, which was Season 5 during 2015. And he was uh, he was brought into the League for Team Liquid, and they did... I honestly, I have to say, he did pretty, pretty honest, pretty terrible. His, um, he had, uh, he got replaced by Keith middle of the way through it. And then um, they actually started doing a little bit better with uh, Keith in the lineup. And then by the end of the season, though, is when he started picking it back up. They put Piglet back in the League, and they honestly got back into playoff position coming in at the... Sixth place, I think, at that point. They got into sixth place during the regular season, and they came in to face Team Impulse. They, they faced Team Impulse and 3 0 them, and Piglet was by far and away the best player at that time. I think it was it was pretty obvious that the best, like, the person putting most of the effort into carrying the team was him. And then they came into the, the they came in and they played uh, Cloud9, I believe, and they lost 3 2. I mean, Team uh, Cloud Nine at this point, I think, had the best record in the league. It was uh, it was uh, it was expected that the team, like the sixth place team, was gonna lose, but it was really close. Came down a few clutch things that Cloud Nine honestly just had the better macro. They just outmaneuvered them around the map, and it was it really wasn't expected. They go they went into the uh, no they they three would CLG sorry they three would CLG, but uh that I don't think that matters but. Then they go into the second place, the third place match, and they 3-2 uh, Team Impulse. I, to, that's where they play Team Impulse. So this is where we get into the season uh, season 5 during the summer split. And I believe, in my opinion, I think at this point is when I think Piglet was the best player in NA. I know a lot of people probably disagree with that. There's a lot of good players at this point. But, uh, I mean, it's really it really depends on what you, what you kind of crave from an MVP. Team Liquid got first place in the season. Yeah, Team Liquid got first place in the season at this point, I believe. Uh, yeah, it was okay. I got it. So, um, and then Kate, um, let's let's just talk about uh, I know stats aren't really an indicator of how good a player is, but season five, he was one singular point, which is actually, like, I, I don't know if anybody knows this, but this like it's completely insane. It's rare rare that you'll get first and second place to be more than like more than like two or three away. I think that's usually the position where they're around, but. He was an actual, like, a, a full-on point above pretty much everybody else almost. And uh, he, in the KDA department, and his second place person was about five points below him. It was a nine-point something on Piglet. I don't know for sure. I can link the I'll link a stat sheet if you guys want to check it out yourself. Like, I'll link a, a link to the stats where you can check out the stats yourself. But, uh, and then his, his second place person... Yeah, second place person was five, like a whole five points below him on his own team, is what I'm saying. His own teammate, his second place person, he was at five point something, which was I Will Dominate at the time. And he was like nine point, nine point seven. Like it was, it was actually insane the amount of effort he had to put in to like completely take over the team. I think the team would have been a completely, I mean, in, in a completely different spot. I would have given them the MVP if I could have chosen it, but there's really not much I could do. There was a lot of good players at that point. Uh, CLG, CLG got second place, and they had a lot of good players, obviously too. So, um, so Team Liquid goes in as the first place, and they, obviously they disappoint. They lose to TSM right off the bat, and then I believe they lose to uh, who did they play in the? They played. Okay, 
I don't I don't think the third place match 100% matters. I'm going to look it up real quick, but in season 15 season 5, sorry. Summer split playoffs. Let's look real quick. Wait, no, not players. Hey. Summer playoffs. Yeah, okay, so they win 3-1, 3-1 against, uh, what is it, Team Impulse inside of the uh, the actual third place match. They beat them again, and what what obviously we all know they were first place inside of the gauntlet, and uh, Cloud9 reverse swept them, or was it reverse swept? I think this is the time they reverse swept them in the gauntlet. So I, again, I probably should have kept notes, but this is on the spot. I was just trying to do something before I went to sleep or work, so... So essentially, we had this. I think this was probably the prime of what at what I would put Team Liquid. I think Team Liquid obviously the the now Team Liquid is obviously better than the last season, but for the most part, I'm talking about pre double if Team Liquid. So I I want to say again, I'm not trying to put double. I mean Piglet in, in as an elite ADC, but again, I I do think people rating him at ninth to tenth are a little bit non generous. So we go in. I think by far and away, season fifteen. I'm season five, summer split. He he leads his team. He's the most valuable player by far. If we remember the um, blind baron steal he did against team TSM, um, he he pretty much put the team on his back for ninety percent of the games, and I feel like he didn't get the MVP mostly because due to the fact that uh, again Team Liquid didn't perform in the playoffs. On top of the fact that they didn't, they didn't really like like I don't I don't it was. There were there was like team points where Phoenix kind of popped off. So it was it was hard to say that Phoenix was getting carried, but for the most like again, like this is all subjective, so I can't really say. But then we get to season six, and this is where uh, this is where Dardock gets in again. Team li like this this is where the uh, kills and stuff start getting shared with the carry jungler. So uh, his his KDA does drop substantially. I think his kill participation was still pretty high, but he's still he's still the best mo the highest KDA on his team with Dardock on it. But it drops off substantially, and by the end of the split, I believe this is where, this is where like extremely large amounts of like yeah, an insane large amount of a, uh, aggressive like tendencies in the team started to pop up. This is where the breaking point was in season six and stuff. So um, we get we get a point where P Piglet actually gets replaced off the roster for Fabby. I don't know why they replaced him, but I guess it's because obviously Dardox the most valuable because he's a. Uh, He's a homegrown NA talent, but I feel like you're giving a little bit too much power to somebody like that. He he gives he frees up a slot for an import slot. I feel like that's why they kind of sided with him in that one. Or no no actually Piglet Piglet chose to go down there. Never mind, they didn't. But uh okay so and then and then season five I mean season six we have that in the spring. They obviously do pretty terrible for the entirety of that. I, I mean there was there's really nothing notable to say besides like kind of what happened throughout the season was him like the breaking point fabi replaces him during the summer spring he comes back for a little bit but for the most part he doesn't play and then we have a uh, 2017 darnox off the team and uh again th th i want to point this out that this was the 2017 was probably the worst i think this is the single worst t team liquid is that they have matt piglet i think who was the, the i i don't even know if they kept a mid laner consistently but Essentially, during the regular season, Piglet, if anybody remembers, Piglet actually ended up playing mid lane for this team. He was he. They put Young Buck in ADC. They had Matt again, still. So Matt Young, Matt Young Buck, uh, Piglet in mid lane, uh, Lorlo and actually Rainover, who was at this time probably the worst jungler in NA. So they have Young Buck, who 100% underperformed. Matt, who's obviously been one of the worst worst ADCs in. I mean, it supports in the league for a long time. Lorlo, who's never been above the top, never been above the top six, I would say. I think he's always been in the bottom, bottom like four. I think he's always been one of the bottom four jungler. And then uh, we have the worst jungler. So this team obviously wasn't able to perform. Piglet was playing mid lane. There was too many clashes and personalities. So Piglet ended up sitting out, and then they brought in double lift. They didn't. I don't think they really won too many games. Still, they get they didn't substantially move up. They didn't go up and. Uh, what's it called? I still believe they got last. But, uh, and they did end up fighting off relegation for that split. And then during the summer split, again, 
Piglet comes back, and they bring in Mickey, who I think is still, again, inconsistent. But he's really good on specific days. So Mig Mickey and Piglet are pretty much the primary carries, and then everybody else sucks. So they still have, again, they still have Matt. They have Lorlo. They have Rainover still. I don't know why. And then uh, we get to the point where it's pretty obvious at this point that this team is not going to perform. They get last place again. So I think that a large portion of the things that come to people's minds are what kind of happened during the regular season. This is kind of his last major part time inside of the scene. And it was it's really unfair to kind of put the blame on him. When in reality, I think he was the, the one actually decent player on this team at this point. I know it's kind of kind of kind of pushing off the and not letting making him shoulder the blame, but for the most part I think he is kind of unblameable. Like the team was absolutely atrocious at this point. There was nothing really much he could do besides uh kind of put out put out the DPS and all that stuff he can do, but ADC is extremely reliant on somebody else, which is unlike most of the other lanes, so it's kinda of harder for ADCs to solo carry. Again, one of the few th people... There's few people, I think, who can do it. And I think Teddy is one of them. But it's unfair to put somebody in that... And even then, Teddy's never had this bad of a team. Never to this extent. But, uh... What is it? Okay, and then we get to uh, Season 8. Obviously, Piglet really only played two games in the in the uh, professional scene. So if anybody's unaware, he, he, did, he was probably the best performing ABC in the Academy League if anybody takes that into account. And then he played two games. I want to I wanna address those two games because those come to mind for most people. The first game, they played uh, 100 Thieves, which was with, uh, what's it called? Uh, him and Vulcan in the bot lane. And I actually, again, the two games they played, they played against Team Liquid and 100 Thieves, which at that point were the two best teams about. Yeah, two of the best teams. And also, they were uh, two of the best bot lanes. So it's really unfair to throw them in at that exact moment with a rookie who really didn't have any stage presence at that point in time. So uh, we get to that. Piglet. Piglet plays. Uh, yeah. Okay. Piglet. He plays Ezreal both games. I, I guess he kind of understood his the kind of situation he was in where he had to self peel and all that stuff because I don't think he relied on his team that much. I think Febben played absolutely atrocious these two games. And I really do th feel like he was MVP caliber the season before or the split before. So it was kind of sad. Um, he has to. He should have played with Hakuo. I f really wish Hakuo would have stayed in it with him, with Piglet. I feel like these games would have looked a lot better. But uh, we have the first season. I actually do think Vulcan played well against in the uh, Hundred Thieves game. So um, we have the Hundred Thieves game where it's Braum, Lucian against Ezreal, uh, Ezreal Tom Kench, and everybody know obviously Tom Kench Ezreal lose this lane, but they, I believe they're up twenty fifteen CS at one point as Ezreal Tom Kench was absolutely incredible. Vulcan played extremely well at this point, but obviously the game didn't end up going their way. They lost. I think not really in due to the fact that Piglet or Vulcan, though I don't think they played insanely well, I do think they lane better. And this kind of what I'm leading on to uh, with Piglet's playstyle and why, why I think it'll function better next split. But uh, obviously the Team Liquid game, they played Double Lift and... Uh, Double Lift and... Ole. Why did I not forget his name? So they played Team Liquid... And double lift Ole, get the uh, like, I I do want to stress they did exert a lot of pressure on the hundred thieves game, made them f flash, made uh, force a flash out of Afro Moo and all that stuff early in the laning phase and all that, not not like cheese or anything either, like they straight up just beat them down and kind of forced a flash out of them because they were putting way too much pressure on them, but uh, during this during the double lift uh the double lift game I think during yeah. It, again, both of these games were during the summer split. So during the double lift game, I do. It was obvious that Vulcan. I think this is the game where nerves kind of got to him because if anybody remembers, they were actually putting a lot of pressure. They were pushing them into into the uh, into the tower itself. They were like shoving him in, and Vulcan Vulcan attempted to get a kill onto. I can't remember which one it was. It, it, one of the laners, one of one of the bot laners for Team Liquid, and. Ended up getting himself killed. He took two tower shots, getting himself killed inside of the turret. <coughs> I want to. I wanted to say yeah. And then he he roamed top after that, a little bit after that, and then Piglet essentially got flashed on and ult would by Rakan, which he was not able to escape, even as Ezreal. So he got killed there, I think. And then that was kind of where the laning phase kind of fell off. And then we had 
we had a t fight in bot lane where uh, Tom Kench actually ulted top with Piglet in his mouth, ulted him right into the middle of their team, and they got murdered. That's where, and I think, for the most part, Piglet played that the best he could. He actually, he actually survived for a bit. Uh, he dodged a bunch of, uh, what's it called, uh, skill shots, but there's not really much you can do after that. I think that Vulcan really underperformed this game. I think he played decently well during the 100 Thieves, but during this Team Liquid, I think he was the biggest liability on the team at that point. That him, Febvin, all of them were underperforming. So I think it's really hard to hold these two games against him, mostly due to the fact of the things I said, uh, Vul how Vulcan played, how Febvin played, the, the, the competition they had to face, the two best teams in NA at this exact moment. Um, the two best bot lanes, so it was kind of... And they did really well in one of the bot lanes, so it's kind of hard to say it was just that, but... So again, we have these two things held, like, what hap that's essentially what happened there. And then, uh, I think, I think the, what I'm trying to get at is, though I do not think that Piglet is a top four ADC, I did, I did put him there. I think I, I've, I actually, I've acknowledged it that I, I overrated him a bit. I really like Piglet, again, I think he could easily be a top ADC, but inconsistencies are something that he struggled with recently during his uh, Team Liquid during his last season in 2017 for as a main player I don't think he played that well I don't think he played terrible I think that was more due to his terrible team again I think his ter his team was just absolutely atrocious at that point but he also did underperform I think 2015 again his summer split he was the best player in NA not even just best ADC I bud I guess that's again subjective his 2015 2016 Best player on Team Liquid still, even with Dardock on the team. But not in the league, obviously. I think they kind of shared the role. They were two really good players that I feel like should have worked out, but it didn't. But um, what I'm trying to say is on Clutch Gaming, I think there's a lot of not like faith put a against them. I would say, I mean, Lyra, obviously, he's kind of earned it. I think Lyra underperformed for an entire year. I mean, even though I kind of want to put the blame on a... Not even put the blame, but uh, kind of say that there is a chance that it was a, a clash of personality between him and Febvin, kind of dishing out who's going to take the role of uh, getting the resources, which I do think Febvin actually ended up winning out for the summer sport. For that season, as we saw MVP, his MVP caliber uh, performance in the spring split, I do, like, again, uh, Lyra, Lyra in the, uh, he also suffered during the uh, funnel meta, which was obviously targeted towards their mid laner, and he got didn't really get much of the resources de devoted towards him. But again, it wasn't just that. Lyra obviously underperformed regardless of that. So I do think he can bounce back. Obvi like If you've seen him during his Korean days, he was one of the better junglers. But we have to see him get back to that point. We also saw um, like uh, Huni, who's pretty much, if anybody's realized, he's been, for the most part, absolutely incredible in his, his what's it called, his uh, career. He's been inconsistent, I won't deny that. His uh as uh, Fnatic days, you can't really blame fault him for much. His uh Immortals days right after that, I think he was the one of the best players in NA. For most actually for the pretty much the majority of it. And then we get to his SKT days, he does really well during the summer the spring split. But during the summer split he kinda falters and obviously like do, and then he comes back really hard during Worlds. I think he played extremely well at Worlds, second best performing player on that team. Bang was just a use, was kind of useless during Worlds that year. But uh, he gets back to NA, and I think he just he's the best player, the best top laner, maybe the best, maybe the best player. Yeah, I would say he's the best player during the the summer uh, last year's spring split, and during the summer split he was just a complete liability. He did not come back to form. So, do I think that he's done? For, I think he can absolutely bounce back. He's done. He's done these little slopes, like kind of dips in, in play, like a lot throughout his entire career. So inconsistencies are something that do plague him, like pretty often. So I'm not gonna say that he's, like I think he's gonna be a top three top laner. I think that without a doubt he's gonna bounce back. I don't know how soon. I'm I'm really hoping he's number two by the end of some, spring split. I think he's capable of it. And then we have bot lane who is Vulcan and Piglet. No, wait, we didn't. Address mid lane. Sorry. A uh, Demonte, I you've already seen I'm not gonna go over Demonte again. We've already went over it in a few other videos, so you already have my my input on what I think he is. One of the bottom tier mid laners in NA, but I went over it in more detail in other ones if you want to check that out. Uh oh yeah, and uh 
yeah, I went over I, again in in detail in detail in my mid lane power rankings. But bot lane, um, we have Piglet and Vulcan. I again, I've talked about that a little bit. But what I do want to acknowledge, and I do think, if you've watched his uh, academy days, he's the best. Again, I think this is the most dominant bot lane in the academy, which is not much to say. I don't think there's too much talent pool inside of the NA scene, but I do think they were. I think that Vulcan has the potential. You, if you saw during his 100 Thieves game, I think he showed glimpses of being a really good support there. But it's but again during the Team Liquid uh, the uh, Team Liquid game, he he obviously saw his, um he acting as though he's a rookie. But um I do think he's very capable of being a top tier support in NA. I just think that he just kind of get got thrusted into the limelight and it didn't do well for him. Um Piglet um, he's an aggressive laner. I think he's with, again, I think Vulcan's an extremely aggressive supporting laner. So I think this is going to mesh really well. Is another reason why I th think this team's going to work. People see, I, I overrate, I do overrate Piglet and Clutch Gaming. I put both of them in the top six. I put, I put Clutch Gaming in playoff position. So that kind of gives you kind of my insight on that. I think they're an extremely volatile team. I know I should, this is more of a, uh, What's it called? Like a video about Piglet, but I do want to acknowledge, I want to acknowledge a few things about Clutch Gaming because I do think that there's a little unfair fairness kind of surrounding them in, in terms of what people say. I would like to see them get a new mid laner, but it's really unlikely to do. But uh, Piglet, I do think, like, I do think if if you want my honest opinion, he's gonna be a top five ADC next year. Like again, I'm gonna look absolutely stupid next year if he isn't. If he's like bottom number two, bottom two. Then I mean you can call me on it. I mean I've I've put my opinion out there. I really I've seen I've watched his games. It's not like I'm doing this without like actual knowledge. I'm just I guess again it's subjective, but I do think he is gonna be a top five ADC in, next year, and I think he could easily like not easily, but I think he's capable of being a top three. I think he could take one of those spots if he comes back to form. Like again we haven't really seen a good piglet since the summer. A spring split of 2016. I think that's when he kind of faltered off. And I don't think it was really due to him. Again, there's a lot of variables that came in between it. But I do... Like, the kind of... The kind of, the piglet I saw in the academy scene looked absolutely tremendous still. So I think he's capable still. But... Um, that's pretty much it. Um, if you have any, like, opinions as to why I'm wrong, which are there's going to be a lot of them, I really hope not too many people watch this. I get, I get flamed a lot when I talk about piglet, but... I, I do, I want to acknowledge my biasness. I do think I overrated him in the ADC ranking. Again, I do, I should not have put him at number four. There was no reason for that. But again, I also don't think he should be bottom two, uh, which a lot of you kind of suggested to me, or by a lot, I mean, the one person who comments everyone, <laughs> every time. But uh, yeah, I, I think that's pretty much it. I've acknowledged my, my faults. And uh, if you have any like kind of ideas as to why I'm wrong, just let me know in the comments. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Have a good night. Oh yeah, I'm supposed to say my name. I'm JTH. Goodbye. <laughs>